from a normative perspective, from a perspective that connects democracy with, with news media and with journalism, the link between them is trust is extremely important. And if we, again, go back to the concept of trust more general, when we talk of trust, of course, we talk of belief, we believe in someone, we believe in something, we have an expectation from someone, from if it's news media, if it's uh, government, whatever. And when we uh, trust, we are also willing to take risks and that those risks may also mislead us as well, because we are taking the risks there, and this is the same. Um, according to uh, so, uh, Coleman, from a sociological perspective, the, soci the foundation of uh, the social relationship we call citizen is citizenship is based on trust. So, uh, and from a well for a well-functioning demo democracy, there is this need for informed citizens. Huh? And uh, for, for citizens to be informed, the place where that information has been traditionally found is the mass media, and increasingly so through digital sources um, to access to multiple information. Scholarship also talks about the value of common knowledge. Uh, when uh, societies have common knowledge, uh, common facts, that will lead to shared concerns, and those concerns can then be translated into, hopefully, solutions. If we share the same facts and the same knowledge, and therefore, if we do, uh, all this breaks down, practically, if uh, we don't have... Uh, um, if uh, we don't uh, use the media, uh, we don't use the news media, and we don't trust the news media. It's useless, uh, it's useless having them if we don't use them, if we don't trust them. So, why are we here? How did we get here? First of all, the collapse in, in uh, news media trust is not, not unique. Um, it is also very general in, uh, because the there is a collapse in most democracies of trust in institutions in general. It's not just in news media, but it's also in institutions in general. In most, uh, um, in most uh, uh, democracies, um, the level of trust in, uh, in institutions ranges even less than 50%. Then it is about uh, the sheer barrage, the sheer extent uh, of information that we have uh, out there. So many sources vying for our attention, and we need not uh, go to the news media to learn about our world. Me, we may uh, find it preferable to learn about our world through a Netflix series or through a or through political satire, or through social media. So it's not necessary that it is not necessarily that we come back. Then there are, of course, the attacks on mainstream media as the lying press. We think instinctive, instinctively of Donald Trump here, but of course he is just one of many who have been uh, um, really um, criticizing and uh, con uh, Matalino spoke of contempt uh, before um, to, uh, towards the media. So it's the lying press and th that also uh, diminishes trust. The increase in use of, the so of social media, um, there, have, there are uh, um, a number of studies that show that the use of social media increases distrust in news in, in media. Then there is also the fact that you have politicians and social actors speaking directly to citizens. So they bypass the news media, bypass the gatekeeping that used to be done by news media, and they can speak inst instinctively to, uh, to uh, 
uh, in instantly to, uh, to the citizens. The news media and business model has changed. We talked about algorithms before, and I'm, I'm not going to repeat what we heard this morning, and all of that also um, comes into play. The rise of populist movements. We didn't talk so much about that, but the rise of populist mo movement, anti-immigration attitudes and polarization have all contributed to a uh, distrust in media, and, and it is... Uh, Again, also uh, um, confirmed by scholarship th those that people with strong ide ideological attitudes have usually low, uh, uh, low trust in news media. Rise, the rise of partisan and alternative media as well. Again, um, the way that the, the lowering of barriers Everybody can become a publisher today, so there you are, you can have your idea and your partisanship, and it's, all, it's out there. More disinformation and more disinformation, misinformation and fake news than ever before. Um, at, at least the concern about uh, fake news and misinformation is an all time is at, is at an all time high about uh, um, 76% say that uh, they are uh, concerned about misinformation from this, uh, through this Edelman Trust report. Um, uh, and, uh, of course, there have been uh, also... Uh, um, whoops, okay, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think this must be coming, um, taking place uh, uh, automatically, so I'm, I'm talking a bit too much here. Um, so, uh, going back to number 10, easier to find news that supports one's view. This is again not new. Of course, this has been there, but of course, the way that one can find people that support one's views is that we are very easily, uh, we can easily fall into echo chambers today because we can find the people that support our views much easier than we used to uh, before. So, um, that, those challenges indicate that we must define and measure trust as, as much as possible. What we know from the scholarship is that defining and measuring trust is, however, problematic. Huh? The, so, from a definition perspective, trust and, uh, and, defi and credibility are often used interchangeably, and we often also use uh, other def many defini definitions replace trust with confidence, belief, uh, reliability, similar ter terms. Most of the research on trust is conducted through polling, again, also limited in scope, and survey leave, uh, data, and usually leave it up to the respondents themselves to come up with their own understanding of trust. So there isn't a definition uh, of trust that is provided to respondents as, as easily. Um, from a media perspective, uh, uh, unpacking and unpacking of trust has been provided by Coring, and Coring talks about the concept of selectivity as central to trust in the media. Um, of course, journalism is by its own very nature selective. Journalists select information, uh, particular information and not another. And there are uh, different aspects of trust, trust in, uh, in the topics that's selected. So when we trust the media, basically, we are trusting the media in selecting the topics that they want to discuss for us. They, that we are trusting them in factual selectivity in then uh, providing the facts for the topics that we are talking to. The trust in factual correctness, trust in the accuracy then of those facts, and last but not least, trust in explicit evaluations, trust that is in the, in the context. How, 
how do how is this uh, how are these topics provided within a context what what uh, um, does this report say how is it framed um, what are we referring to when speaking of media trust mm? again this is also then about measurement most research when so this is about levels of analysis at the level of analysis of the institute most research is done at the institutional level so uh, type of questions like this how much trust do you have uh, uh, and confidence do you have in the mass media as a general as an institution um, other surveys talk about media types other um, and the one that i spoke to you earlier um, uh, the Reuters digital news uh, report has uh, this uh, type of measurement. Please indicate the level of agreement with the following statement. And I think you can trust most news most of the time, trying to get as much, obviously, information as possible. Most news I consume most of the time. News and social media most of the time. News and search engines most of the time. So, and again, so uh, when we're talking about media trust, we also um, individual studies then operationalize media trust in many different ways. So, uh, uh, this Gaziano and McGrath, for example, um, provide pairs, uh, 12 pairs of, of words fair, unfair, biased, unbiased. Um, uh, is uh, is cognizant of the public interest is not uh, so all of this trying to measure media trust so it's what i'm saying basically is that this is not straightforward neither is uh, um, definition nor is uh, is measurement when we come to media trust and media use this is also pro problematic first of all there are uh, um, surprisingly few, there's surprisingly few research on media trust and media use. Um, Swati and Ariely have come up with uh, um, three aspects of uh, news that influences audience trust, the individual characteristics, and those relate to demography, relate to attitudes, relate to uh, um, how much uh, you consume. Uh, uh, media, so uh, um, from an individual, uh, for example, we know that uh, uh, people tend to trust media more who consume media more. Uh, so um, these individual characteristics. The source traits of news, we're talking about uh, media characteristics then, the ones that uh, um, I spoke to earlier. Um, and this is the last... Uh, the least studied of all, the social context in which news is consumed. Um, before this morning, somebody talked, uh, um, um, talked about endorsements and how, uh, uh, especially online, uh, um, if, uh, if something is suggested by a friend or a relative, that, uh, that heightens our trust, uh, that increases our trust, uh, um, and so, um, those are some of the items. One last, um, before I conclude, um, one last uh, thing about young people and news. Can we look at some, look at some uh, reports or uh, some scholarship and see how, new, how young people consume news uh, and see whether these can provide us with some insights into trust. Um, we know that uh, young people still want to connect to their world, so it's not true that young people um, are not are disinterested. They would still want to connect to the, their world, but not necessarily through the traditional uh, media um, as what was uh, um, considered to be the normal way. So they could. Much consumption, much news consumption of young people happens indirectly. So they'll be scrolling down their news feeds and 
much of uh, much of uh, um, links to news is incidental. So they get to news in a very different way, and that has an impact on context because usually that is not within a context that is more appropriate. Young people have a, a much more individual and a broader vision of what news is. So it's not, it's not only what uh, uh, they should know, but it's what use, is useful to know, what is interesting to know, and it's also about what is fun to know. Um, there are some people who will talk about young people and news, and I'm sure that um, they will discuss this. Young people do rely on social media, but don't trust it. Hmm? Again, a um, uh, number of uh, reports have shown, a number of surveys have shown that social media, again, languishes at the very bottom of uh, trust ratings, even for young people. So, there you are. Young people often um, consider news consumption like a chore, which may be something that we should reflect about. This is also very interesting, uh, because, again, we've been discussing that misinformation and, uh, and the, the decline of trust is uh, providing a democratic meltdown, and, uh, and we've seen, of course, some things happening, but uh, at least in some of these studies, and in some of these studies which have uh, shown young people, which have uh, engaged with young people more than with just, uh, with just surveys, but have done in-depth um, in-depth interviews with young, with young uh, participants have also done uh, um, looked into their mobiles and saw their rec uh, the records of their uh, uh, news consumption data. So there has been a bit more uh, uh, qualitative uh, research there. Fake news is seen more as a nuisance um, than a democratic meltdown. Um, this research has been done, however, with young people in the US uh, and, uh, and uh, the UK. And last but not least, that young people uh, employ a number of uh, uh, shortcuts to make assessments on media trust. So they come to media trust in, a, in a very different ways. Some, some uh, endorsements we've discussed already, but some uh, the familiarity of a brand, for example, the risk of a brand uh, about in, of that will happen to that brand if it engages with uh, misinformation but also some more intuitive ways of doing that. So, uh, um, gut feelings as well, and uh, I'm sure you will um, uh, discuss this more. So, young people and news can also challenge the way that we talk about the lack of uh, news media, the, the decline in, the, in, uh, uh, in uh, trust in news media. Some conclusions. I'm in time. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is obviously a, a necessity for better definition and me measurement to, con to conduct comparative studies. There is still an importance, of course, for a fact-based narrative. Now, whether that is coming from uh, new sources or whether it's coming from the, um, very different uh, information, we need to have this uh, fact-based uh, um, foundation on which we can then try to solve uh, societal problems. Um, there is uh, more consumption um, media consumption of brands and content does not necessarily imply trust and credibility. Noah was saying this morning, well, he, he sometimes clicks on uh, stuff mm -hmm. that he doesn't, you know, really um, believe in. Um, young people offer hope, I think. Um, they are well aware of the problems associated with disinformation and they are actively trying to um, find that out. Uh, 
But the way that uh, they, they sometimes meet, come to meet, uh, um, and access uh, content in an atomized way may not provide the, the much preferred context that is uh, best uh, um, for, for a better understanding for informed citizenship. And last but not least, again, our last uh, um, presentation this morning was on AI. Um, trust in news media may take uh, yet another beating, I suppose, um, with easier access, of course, of uh, the harmful part of AI, the harmful use of AI um, and other technology to produce more than just uh, um, text, uh, fake text, but also fake visuals, fake videos, and all of that.